invite you to turn in your Bibles to the book of John, the book of John, chapter number 13. We're going to start reading in chapter 13 with verse number 36. That's where I believe the chapter division should go, but Lord willing, we shall try to speak to you out of a subject in John 14, 2, uh, a prepared place. But let's start reading in John 13, 36. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? See how it starts off with where Jesus is going? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, ye cannot follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. You can't follow me to the cross, but afterwards you will follow me into eternal glory. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice, three times. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Don't let your heart be troubled when these reverses come, and even to the point of your denial, Peter, I'm the one that's holding things together. You believed in God? Abraham, you believe in Yahweh? Yes. Well, I'm him. Moses, you believe in Elohim? Yes. Well, that's me. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many abodes, many dwelling places, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Okay, Peter, here's an answer to your question. Where am I going? I go to prepare a place for you. If there's ever been a scripture that has been more misused and misinterpreted than this one, I don't know it. At almost every funeral you go to, the preacher will get up and read this passage of scripture and say, Oh, Jesus was a carpenter's son, and he's gone into heaven to build you a mansion. Fooey. Hogwash. Jesus Christ was the son of God, not the son of Joseph. And dear soul, he said, my words are spirit in their life. God is spirit, and you must worship him, come before him with a spiritual mindedness and in truth. So he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He's talking about going to the cross. These preachers act like he's going to Home Depot and buy some sheetrock and nails and, uh, uh, and hammers and saws and build you a, a physical house. There's all he's going to the cross to provide a place, a spiritual place, a place of forgiveness, a place of, re of, of redemption, a place of atonement a place where God shall be satisfied. He, God the Father, shall see the travail of His, God the Son's soul, and shall be satisfied. That's what He's going to do. So He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Dear soul, you ought to be thankful to God today that you have a prepared place. And it's not prepared by a preacher or by religion. It's prepared by the very blood of the Lamb of God himself, which is acceptable to God on your behalf. So a prepared place. In my Father's house are many abodes. There are many places of dwelling. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, and not if, as if he might not, but he did, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Not only a place of, uh, of latitude and longitude, an X on the map, a place, but a condition of life. He's going into his glory. In John 17 and verse 24, I think it is, he said, Father, I will that they may see my glory and behold my glory. So we are going into glory. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. He said those he justified, 
uh, th those he, he chose, he also justified, and whom he justified, he also sanctified, and whom he sanctified, them same crowd, he also glorified. So he's promising you and giving you his word that God has a prepared place for you because Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, went to the cross to atone for our sin. But not only did he atone for our sin, but Hebrews 2.14 said, There at the cross, through death, he destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So he kicked the devil, and we'll read that later, Lord willing, in Revelation chapter 12. We'll read that later and see where Satan was thrown out of his place. Why? Because it was not a place prepared of God. It was not a place prepared by the blood of the Lamb of God. It was not a place prepared by the Lord Jesus Christ in accordance to the will and purposes of God Almighty. So Satan gets thrown out of his place, and you get put in not his place. It's not a used house. It's not a, you know, it's not Satan's old dwelling place. No, it's a place prepared of God. Isn't that good? It, it is a special place. It is an eternal place. It is a place of redemption and sanctification, of glorification. It is a place that cannot be changed. It is a place where you cannot lose. You cannot be ex uh, evicted. It is a place that God has prepared for you, that he has de determined to uh, bring you in from all eternity. Before I finish reading, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 16. Hebrews 11 and verse 16. Here it is. But now they, the, the elect of God, desire a better country, not the physical. I don't want to go to Jerusalem. I don't want to go to national Israel. But our country is, that is, an heavenly country. Wherefore he is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Do you like that? Let's reread that without interrupting it. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. This is something that God has determined to prepare from all eternity. It was in the mind and heart and purposes and in, in providences and election of God and predestination of God that you should have a prepared place. So Jesus said, I'm coming to, to prepare that place for you. So when you go to a funeral of some departed loved one and the preacher gets up there and say, well, Jesus was a carpenter's son and he's gone up to heaven to build you a mansion. You may not be able to get up and tell that preacher he's lying, which I feel like doing every time I hear it. But I just sit there and say, God have mercy on these people listening to these lies. But make sure you understand that you don't believe that. Don't let them uh, naturalize that which God has provided for you in the spiritual. He said, my words are spiritual and they are life. So we understand that God is spirit. And we must worship him in spirit. We must understand these words in spirit. A prepared place gone into the, the, the depths of redemptive uh, grace at the cross that he might prepare a place and satisfy God on your behalf. Isn't that good? Let's go back and read John 14 and continue where we left off. He said, let me reread verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And after the cross, Jesus appeared to them. He appeared to Mary at the tomb. He appeared 
to the two on the road to Emmaus. And if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you'll see how the Apostle Paul lists after uh, for 40 days, he showed himself after many infallible proofs that he had risen from the dead. So he did come and revealed himself to them again. But also, dear soul, he will come the second time at his second coming and receive us all. And said the holy angels shall gather them all together. Let me stop again. We'll come right back again. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. The book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse number 34. Matthew 25 and verse number 34. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom. Listen prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is not something God just decided to do at the last minute. This has been prepared from the foundation of the world. There wasn't an angel yet invented, created, to, to sing a hallelujah to God. There wasn't any atmosphere. There was not anything. There was not even a nothing to say that that's nothing. It was nothing in existence except God. But in the purposes and in the heart and the mind of God, he had determined that there would be a prepared place for you. Isn't that good? Well, look on down to verse 41 while we're in Matthew 25. Verse number 41. Then, he, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Whosoever believeth not is condemned already. And dear soul, if you believe not, you have to be, uh, you have to infiltrate the devil's place. The devil's place was a prepared place from the foundation of the world, prepared for the devil and his angels into everlasting fire. And you have to go in there and push your way in and say, "Get up, move over, devil! I'm coming into this fire with you. You don't belong there." Because, dear soul, uh, you shouldn't belong there, I should say. You should have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and go into the place prepared from the foundation of the world as in verse 34. But there's another prepared place. It's the place prepared for the devil and his angels. You don't want to go there. Death and hell shall be cast into the lake of fire. You don't want to be there. Whosoever believeth not is condemned already. But whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, and shall go into a place prepared of God from the foundation of the world. All right, let's see if we can go back to John 14 and take up where we left off. Verse number 4, John 14, 4. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Well, why then is Peter in chapter 13 and verse 36 asking, Lord, whither goest thou? If he knew the way, why was he asking? Where was he going? Because, dear soul, Jesus Christ is the way, and if you know him, you know the way. Let me ask you something. Before Gutenberg was invented, and he invented the printing press, and before Bibles were commonly printed and given out like they are today, or available as they are today, how did people know how to go to, uh, to, the, to this prepared place? How did Abraham know? He didn't have a preacher. He didn't have a church. He didn't have a Bible. And the Holy Spirit was not yet given as it was at Pentecost. How did Abraham get there? By faith, because he knew the way. And the way is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the way, we'll read it in a minute, the truth and the life. He is the way. Do you know the Lord? Then you know the way. Shall you miss this prepared place that all these other people are going to and that this preacher is trying to ex express to you? 
Shall you miss the way? How, how could you do that? If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the free pardon of sin and in his redemptive work. Dear soul, to know the Lord is to know the way. He's to know the truth about God. And he is the life that animates you and will see that you get there. Not one single person that God has chosen in Christ from before the foundation of the world shall ever miss this prepared place. How did your granny get there? How did her granny get there? How did the ancients get there when they didn't have any Bibles? It wasn't the written word that got them there. It was the person of the living word. Jesus said in John 5, 39, search the scriptures. That's good. You ought to. But be careful for a lot of people in them, in the scriptures, they think they have eternal life. Memorize the verse of scripture, I'm going to heaven. Jesus said, no. The scriptures are they which testify of me. The printed word is that which testifies of the living word, and it is only the living word that shall get you into eternal eternity. I made a statement at a Sovereign Grace conference one time and really got uh, reamed out about it by a real sharp preacher from, from Alabama. I said, you cannot take your Bibles to heaven. Made him mad. So I asked him, well, dear sir, what Bible will it be? Will it be the Geneva Bible? Will it be the uh, Bible written in Hebrew? Or will it be the King James? Or one of the many different interpreters? What Bible are you going to take? There are not going to be any Bibles in heaven, but the Word of God will be there. Because the Word of God is the person of Jesus Christ. Say amen. Thank God. I've, I've wore out so many Bibles, it's unbelievable. And this old Bible cover, it's got holes in it. And it's, it's barely holding together now. But dear soul, I ain't never wore out Jesus. He's just as fresh and powerful and good and holy and, 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 and uh, 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 able to get me to God as he ever was. He never changes. He said, you son of Jacob, I change not. Therefore, you are not consumed. So, uh, and whither I go, you know, and the way you know. John 14, 5. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Again, he's thinking like Peter in chapter 13 and verse 36. He's thinking that Jesus is going on a physical journey, and they want to know, well, show us here on the map where you're going. That wasn't what he was talking about. He's talking about going into the depths of hell and destroying the power of the devil by his blood. He's talking about going into the depths of redemption and redeeming all the ransomed church of God to be saved, to sin no more. Christ the mighty maker died for man the creature's sin. I don't know how can one who is the life die. I am the life, but he died. I don't understand that, but I'm glad he did. So the Lord Jesus Christ is trying to tell Thomas and to, and to tell Peter, you're not thinking right. It's not like I'm going to leave Atlanta and go to Athens. Georgia. It's not like I'm, I'm going to leave Athens and, and go uh, to Savannah. I'm not talking about going to a physical place on a map. I'm talking about a spiritual work of God Almighty in me going and preparing a place for you by going to the cross. And that's what I want to stand up and holler at preachers. I got a chance to do it one time, and I was the preacher. A brother had passed away, and his family asked me to conduct the funeral, whatever that means. And I used this, and I said, there, and there were pastors that were there, and I said, you preachers, you've got to quit lying to these people. He's not going to Home Depot and get some hammer and nails and go build a house. He's going to the cross. Stay in a spiritual uh, concept. Peter, that's what you need to be doing. Thomas, that's what you need to be doing. That's what Jesus is talking about. 
And, and then in verse number 6 of John 14, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. They're saying we don't know the way. Do we go north on I-85 or south on I-95? That's not what I'm talking about. I am the way. How did Abraham get to God? Without a church, without a Bible, without a preacher. He got to God by knowing Christ, by knowing God, by faith, Abraham. That's what it says. And this old Jesus says on down uh, that the world cannot receive the comforter down in verse 16. Uh, he said the world cannot receive him, verse number 19, because they cannot see him. Let me read that to you. Verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, this verse 17, not 19. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. They want something physical they can see. They want a picture and statue of Jesus. They want to do something physical. They want to see a, a statue of Peter and kiss his foot. They want to kiss the Pope's ring. They want, a pomp, they want pomp and circumstance. They want guys walking around with banners and little pointed uh, hats on their head and little curly silk shoes and say, this is how you get to God. It provides that Roman Catholic Church and even the, the Roman Baptist Church provides you with a lot of physical stuff to give you confidence that you know God when none of that is of God. The reason the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit is because they can't see Him. John fourteen seventeen. Because it seeth Him not. And He says, Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because they can't see him. They want something they can see and feel and touch and smell. And look at John chapter 6 and verse number 40. The book of John chapter 6 and verse number 40. And this is the will of him that sent me that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, I, I believe that's Bible. I know that's the Word of God. But dear soul, physically, you have never seen Jesus of Nazareth. Neither have I. Then how are we going to go to heaven? Again, we're not like Thomas and we're not like Peter saying, show us on the map where you physically are going locally, physically, literally. No, this is not seeing the sun as far as uh, seeing him like I see this microphone. This is an envision, and let me get that word out, an envisioning him by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, again, Hebrews chapter 11. In verse number 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Now faith, verse 1. Now faith is the substance, the confidence of things hoped for. Listen, the evidence, the essence, the assurance of things not seen. Faith is the evidence of of an assurance of things not seen. Have you ever seen Jesus? Yes and no. What do you mean yes and no? Yes, the Holy Spirit has given me faith to be able to envision the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and put my soul and my hand and my heart and my life in His hand and say, He has done everything He said He would and I believe he shall continue to do so by faith. We, we please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Bible said that, uh, that they saw him who is invisible. 
these all died in the faith. It said they saw him who was invisible. That is a, an envisioning him by faith. Faith evidences things not seen. Then the world said, we can't see the Holy Ghost. Guess what you just said? You just said you don't have faith. I don't see Christ by these eyes and by 2020 vision. I see Christ by the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, and He envisions Christ for me, and I receive that by faith. So the Lord said, The world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because it seeth Him not. But John 6, 40 said, You have done two things that assure you that you are born again. You have seen the Son and believed on Him. John 6, 40. And this is the will of Him that sent me. Jesus is talking. This is will of God the Father that sent me. That everyone which, number one, seeth the Son, and number two, believeth on Him, may have everlasting life. It's never going to end. And I will raise him up at the last day. So we understand and see that the Holy Spirit gives us an, an awareness of Jesus, who is the way. He said, Thomas, the way ye you know. Thomas said, no, we don't. Peter said, where are you going? Jesus said, the way you know, because I am the way. You know me, you know the way. How did Moses get to heaven? How did your granny get to heaven? How did everybody that's in eternal glory right now get there? By faith. For without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Have you ever trusted God? You have to believe that he is. Well, now that you believe that he is, how do you know personally, silently, invisibly, inside your soul, just you yourself, that God is? Because I have prayed to him and he has given me answers. He said, as many of two of you agree as touching any one thing on earth, it shall be done. He is a present help in time of need. And we sing that song, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And in Isaiah, I hope, chapter 30, here I go again, looking for something that I hope is there. Or is it Isaiah 20? See how I do I, I do this to myself? Isn't that awful that you do this to yourself? Nope, it's Isaiah 30. I think it is. He causes us to understand and perceive and to know him. I think I wrote that down. Make sure that I get it right. Uh, in Isaiah... Oh, well, I, I do this all the time, and, and usually y'all are here to bail me out, but it's that passage of Scripture that Isaiah said you, there'll be a word spoken to you in your heart and say, this is the way, walk ye therein. And, and it's, it's of the Lord. It's, it's God speaking to you. Ah, thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 30, it is, in verse 20 and 21. Boy, you wasted enough time on that, preacher. Yeah, I know. That just lets you know that anything you get from these broadcasts has to be by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Isaiah 30 and verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, and then you we have troubles and trials in our life, and the water of affliction, ye shall yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner. You're never going to lose the teacher, the Holy Spirit. He'll never be withdrawn from you, although you may be having 
hard trials and tribulations. Uh, you, it, it never be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And verse 21 of Isaiah 30. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. How do you know that God, the Holy Spirit, is dwelling in you? Because you have had him direct you by faith and tell you this is the way, walk ye therein. I heard a preacher say, this is not hearsay, I was sitting there when he said it. He said, if I'm not in this pulpit preaching to you, you can't hear from God. Ah, oh, it's like a knife stabbing my heart. And I thought, you are not our Savior. You are not the Holy Spirit. I hope and pray to God that that's not true because I'd be in a big mess because you only, I only come over here to this church every once in a while to a, to a Bible meeting. And you mean the rest of the time in my life that I've never heard from God? You're wrong, preacher. You're not the Holy Spirit. The Lord God Almighty, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. The way ye know, Philip, the way ye know, uh, uh, Peter, I am the way. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto, Tim, unto Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Have you come to the Father? Have you entered your prepared place? Are you dwelling in Christ and Christ in you? How did you get there? No man cometh to the Father but by me. You came by Jesus Christ, not by the Baptist Church, not by the Catholic Church, not by any other religious order. You didn't come by believing the printed page. You came because Christ, as a shepherd, came and got you as a lost sheep and brought you on his shoulder into the presence of Almighty God. Isn't that great? We're there because Jesus came and got us and brought us there. And he did it on purpose. Isn't that good? If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. That goes back to verse number 1. He says, You believe in God, believe also in me. You've been believing in God, David, yes. Samuel, yes. You believed in God, Isaiah, and Ezekiel, and Jeremiah, yes. I'm him. You should believe in the person of Jesus of Nazareth in the same way, to the same degree that you believed in God the Father. For he and the Father are one. I believe that's John 10, 30. I'm not going to look it up. You can. Listen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Is that person a born-again child of God? Yes. How do you know that they are born-again a child of God? Because the Lord Jesus Christ came and brought them to the Father. Isn't that good? If you had known me, this is verse 7 of John 14, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Because you have received the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have seen the Father. One of the disciples said, Show us the Father and it will be sufficient. Jesus said, Have I been so long with you, Philip, and thou hast not known me? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Isn't that good? So there are many mansions, many dwelling places. In my Father's house are many mansions, many dwelling places. And dear soul, we tend to think of heaven as being, you know, just those of us in our family, in our church, and that's about it. But many mansions, what is he talking about? In Galatians chapter 3, Galatians 
chapter 3 and verse number 29. Galatians 3, 29. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Listen, the verse just before that said, In Christ there's not Jew or Greek, there's not slave or free man, there's not male or female, for ye are all one in Christ. We're all one in Christ. And if we are in Christ, we're Abraham's seed. All right, hold on to that in your mind. Go back to Genesis chapter 13. The book of Genesis chapter number 13 and verse number 14. What are you talking about, preacher? Talking about many houses, many mansions, many dwelling places. How many? Well, we're talking about going to heaven. Dear soul, if you consider eternity and not just heaven, that is, when you're born again, you go to heaven. But everybody that's ever been born again throughout the world is in eternity with God. That's a lot of folks. Listen at Genesis chapter 13. Remember, those that are Christ are Abraham's seed. Genesis chapter 13 and verse number 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, had not yet changed his name to Abraham. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed, how long? Forever. Now read me verse 16, or listen to me while I read it to you. This is Genesis 13:16, And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Can you count all the grains of sand on the seashore? You say, that's impossible. That's how many people are going to be in that abode. If we're Christ, Genesis 3.29, then we're Abraham's seed. How many are in Abraham's seed as the dust of the earth, as the sand of the sea, as the stars of the sky? Isn't that amazing? It's going to be uh, uh, like the sand of the sea and the stars of, of the sky. And, and he said, so there are many abodes. Look at Genesis 22 and verse 17. That in blessing, God talking to Abraham, you see that in verse 15, Genesis twenty two seventeen, 17, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, how? As the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Your seed is going to be as the stars of the heavens and as the sand of the sea. Dear soul, that's a lot of people. So Jesus said that I am going to the cross to prepare a place for you. Don't worry about it. You seeing me, Jesus of Nazareth, I don't even own a donkey. I'm a poor man. I, I don't even have enough Influence to keep myself off the cross. They're going to lie on me and, 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 and going to murder me, but I can't stop it. Why? I'm just a poor man without influence. You say, well, I don't know if I believe in him or not. He don't have much influence. But he said, looking at me, you're looking at God. You believe in God? Believe also in me. This is how God will appear. He has chosen the foolish things, the weak things, the base things, yea, the things that are despised. Henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Henceforth know we him no more. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 16. But dear soul, this is a spiritual thing. 
I don't need a picture of Jesus. Excuse me for spitting in the microphone. I don't need a statue of Jesus. I don't want a Bible with pictures in it. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that I acknowledge that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Dear soul, all those things will lead you in the wrong direction. Jesus Christ is the way. He is the one to prepare the place. In fact, dear soul, He is the prepared place. So we understand and see that there was, uh, as the stars of the sky and of the sand of the sea, look at Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. In verse number 9. After this, Revelation 7, 9, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man can number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, less languages, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Folks, listen. You're not just going to heaven to see your granny and her brother. You're not just going to heaven to see uh, Peter, James, and John. You're going into eternal glory, and it takes a multitude whom no man can number. They are like the sand of the sea. They're like the stars of the heaven. It takes that many people to bring to God the proper glory that should be His. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let the elect angels praise the Lord. And let Abraham's seed, a, a, a family without number, as the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Eternity I hath not seen, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath got prepared for those that love him. Paul, did you go up to the third heaven? Yep, sure did. Glad you're back. Come tell us what heaven's like. He said, it's not lawful for me to tell you. In fact, there, ain't no, there are no words. There's nothing to compare it to except the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky. There is a vastness of a multitude that God shall bring to himself. Again, Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, verse number 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred. There's been a lot of families that have lived on this earth, dear friend. The American Indian, the Chinese, uh, the Spanish the French, uh, the Russian, all kinds of people down through the centuries. And God said, out of every kindred. And he says, out of every tongue, out of every language, out of every dialect, somebody's going to be saved, and, and people and nation, out of every nation, every people, every kindred. You have redeemed us by thy blood, and hath made unto us, uh, unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. You don't realize the vastness of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe in God, believe also in me. Is there any place, and I don't know how to say it other than say it like this, is there any place where God is not? No. For it takes God being there for it to be a place. Think about it. And so Jesus is saying, you believe in God in his omniscience and all knowingness? You believe God in his omnipresence, his, in, in his being everywhere all the time, in all things? Yes. That's me. 
you don't have just a little, you know, Jesus meek and mild. Oh, he went about doing good. Here was a fellow that was sick. He made him well. Here's a guy that hadn't had nothing to eat, and he fed him. He's God, dear friend. <laughs> I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And we read you in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 16. They desire a better country that is an heavenly country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. The vastness of eternal glory is beyond the comprehension and the imagination of any man. You're going to have to get there and be there to experience it, but to experience it, we're going to have to have a new body. We shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. In God something. Let's go to Revelation 12. I'm bringing you the same scriptures over and over in these messages over the months and years because if it's true it's not new and if it's new it's not true so I have nothing to tell you but the old old story and here we go back to Revelation 12 the 12th chapter of the book of the Revelation we're talking about a prepared place Revelation 12, 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. The son of righteousness is Jesus Christ, and she's bathed in the outward glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the moon was under her feet. That which she stands on is that which cannot of itself produce any light but it reflects the light of the sun. This is the church. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And you'll find in Revelation 1.20, the 12 stars are the preachers in the right hand of God. So she's crowned with that uh, ministry that God has sent. Drop down to verse number 5. And she brought forth a man-child. Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, was born and brought into the church, or brought into the world through the church. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. When did that happen? Acts chapter 1. This same Jesus whom you see go into heaven shall so come in like manner and they looked until he disappeared in a cloud. His ascension. Now, what happened to the woman? Now that our master has gone into heaven, we are a spiritual being, but we dwell on earth. How shall we survive? Revelation 12, 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Now, according to Israel, any place that was the wilderness was just any place outside of the city limits of Israel. They live out there in the wilderness. It's not like the wilderness that you might think of, but it means it's outside of that which had normally been the place for the church to dwell in national Israel. Listen. Where she hath a place prepared of God. I have been sent over here to tell you, dear friend, you think you're dwelling in the wilderness. You are. But I want you to know something. God has told me to tell you that that place where you are is prepared of God. Well, if I was to live in so-and-so place, I'd be better off. No, you wouldn't. If I'd lived back in such and such a time, I would have been better off. No, you wouldn't. Acts chapter 17. Hold your place. Acts chapter 17. I think it's verse 26. 
Acts 17 and verse 26. And God hath made of one blood. He, believed, he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. Started the blood flowing because the life is in the blood. He hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. God has determined that all men live in all the nations of the world. And how did he do that? And hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. God hath determined when you shall live and where you shall live according to his eternal glory. Columbus sailed the ocean blue, 1492. Yeah, why didn't he sail the ocean blue in 1491? Because it was not ordained of God. Why was America so lately, so lastly to be discovered? Because that's how God had determined it. Jesus said, All authority is given me in heaven and in earth. That's the only place I know, heaven and in earth. Jesus Christ has all authority. He said, Go into that, go ye in that authority. Go where? Go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, to the uttermost part of the world. And dear soul, as God has determined, before determined the times when a nation shall rise and the bounds of how far it shall go, there have been those like Hitler and Napoleon who've tried to conquer the world, but they couldn't do it because God said, that's not what I want you to do. That's not allowed to you. You can't do that because these nations are not going to rise up until I determine to do, and that is because God has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation of every nation and of every individual. Go back to Revelation chapter 12. And the woman fled, verse 6, into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. How long is that? It doesn't matter according to the calendar or your watch. It matters that that's the time that God has determined that the days of evangelism should last before he releases Satan to come forth in the little season and to wind everything up. The church is going to be fed in the, in the, in, in the wilderness at a time appointed in the bounds of her habitation. You can't hinder it. You can't hurt the church. You can't stop it. God's going to take care of her exactly where he says she is to be, when she is said to be, and he will see after her exactly for the length of time that he says that she's to be there. Isn't that good? Why? Because it's a place prepared of God. Did not we read that? Yes. Verse 6 of uh, Hebrews 12, a place prepared of God. Now, I want you to see in verse 7, we stop reading verse 6, Verse 7, what happened at the cross? This is a spiritual understanding. What happened at the cross? He, not Hebrews. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was war in heaven. What was going on while Jesus Christ was on the cross was the devil who had usurped authority and stolen the scepter from Adam and had become the God of this world and an angel of light, said, I'm not giving up my being the, like the Most High and me ruling over everything. I'm not going to do it. But Jesus Christ defeated him. How do you know that? Hold your place. Hebrews chapter 11. Here we go again. No, Hebrews chapter 2. And verse number 14. You say, you read that to us all the time. It's still in my Bible, and I told you, if it's true, it's not new. Listen. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. How did the devil get defeated? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Christ himself, also likewise took part of the same. Why did God become man? Number one that through death 
he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe it is, if the princes of this world had known this, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. The devil said, oh boy, here's the son. Let's kill him and we will now rule over the world forever and ever. But they didn't realize that that, that bit of bait that had been thrown into the water and that shark, the devil, smelled the bloody meat and decided to go after it and nourish himself on it. He didn't realize there was a hook in that, in that meat. He went after the Lord Jesus Christ and he tried to gobble him up and kill him. But he didn't know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't know that God had delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? He didn't know that God had determined to die in order that all of his elect should live. We sing the song, When Christ the mighty maker died for man the creature's sin. The devil came after him and didn't realize that that was God's purpose. It was a mystery. The gospel mystery had been hidden so the devil couldn't know it. And he came after the Lord Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ through death destroyed him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and verse 15 says, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to, to bondage. So in Hebrews 2.14, through death. Dear soul, when it looks like your enemy is having his way or her way over you, yield to God. It was through death, through dying, that Jesus won all. Don't worry about it. Resist not evil. God is in control. Things are going to be, not going to be, things are all right. I don't care how bad they look out there in the world. God is working his will and his wisdom. You don't know his wisdom. I don't know his wisdom. We don't have the mind of God. He may give uh, people an uh, opportunity to show themselves in the worst way and have adverse effect on us all. But it turns out to be his will. Oh, my soul. Second Thessalonians, you need to read it and understand that God is going to allow a man of sin to come with lies and going to deceive and destroy and do everything he can to upset and up, uh, give upheaval to the things of God. But that's the mind and will of God, and God's going to say, gotcha. You just be still and trust in the Lord. Now, where were we? Well, I know. Revelation chapter 12. Okay. We found that the woman has a prepared place and she's to be fed for a prepared number of days. And then we see, well, how did all this happen? In Revelation 7, no, 12 and verse 7, there was war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels. That's Christ and the devil fighting. That's Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. And prevail not, watch it now, neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out. Who is the, the great dragon? He's the old serpent. Who's that? The devil. Who is that? Satan. Who is that? The one which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now listen, how do you know that happened at the cross? Just read verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. When is come salvation? What I told you last week when Jesus said it is finished. Redemption was finished. He had completed the work that the Father gave him to do. Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of of our God and the power of his Christ and the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accuseth them before our God day and night and what are we going to do now when he's cast out into the earth listen we're going to overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his of our testimony and we'll love our lives love not our lives unto the death dying with Jesus through death reckon mine 
living with Jesus, a new life divine. I know our time's gone, but listen at Revelation 12 and 12, and I'll finish. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, the spiritual people, those that are of the church, Ephesians 2, 6, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm on the earth. Yeah, but we're not of the earth. We dwell in heavenly places in Christ by redemptive grace. And it says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye dwell in him, because God has thrown him out. He's won the victory. We're living in victory. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth. If you're just a religionist, if you're not born again, if you don't know God and the free pardon of sin, you're in trouble because the devil is an inhabitant of the earth just like you. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. I don't have any more time myself. My time is short. I appreciate the privilege to come to you. And I want you to understand and know, dear soul, that you are living as a born-again child of God in a place prepared of God for a set time, for a set uh, place, and nobody can do anything about it. You need to learn how to live in it for the glory of God. I wish we had more time. We'll try to bring more to this later. Thank you for your prayers. God bless you. We're praying for you. Yeah. Okay.